Okay, Ms. Edwards, so my name is Kelsey Coke. I am a third year student at Howard University and the coordinator program for dietetics. Um, I'm conducting this interview just for motivation and assignment purposes. Um, this, uh, the questions that I will be asking you will be helpful for me and my peers that are going through the coordinator program at Howard University, just giving us advice um, and helping us navigate through this journey that we have for, um, for the next two years. Um, so Ms. Edwards, I do understand that you are um, a registered dietitian, you work in the outpatient clinical set, um, clinical uh, sector of uh, nutrition. So you work in a weight loss center for bariatric surgery and medical supervised weight loss. Mm -hmm. um, so my first question to you will be, oh, for the record, is it okay if I record this interview? Oh. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Thank you. Almost forgot about that. Okay, so my first question to you, Ms. Edwards, would be why did you choose to focus on clinical weight loss after receiving your RD licensing? Yeah, so I always knew I wanted to go into outpatient, specifically within weight loss. Um, in undergrad, I did a lot of research. I was involved in um, group fitness and personal training and all of that. So I really just love the nutrition and exercise piece. Um, but in grad school and in my internship, I did a um, research study. I was GA, so I worked on a weight loss study in older adults looking at sarcopenia. So that was where I really got, you know, that one-on-one -on -one, um, dietitian counseling experience. Um, and then once I, you know, passed the exam and all that, I did a little bit in a inpatient hospital, but then this position opened up and I just had to jump for it. Yeah, I definitely understand that. So the program you went through, it was a um, it was a master's degree. Yeah, a master's with the internship. Okay. Yeah, that's that's interesting. They said after two thousand and twenty three that all of the programs will require a master. So I'm the last graduate in class. I'm part of the last graduate class Ooh. at Howard. Mm -hmm, who gets like grandfathered into a bachelor. So I'm like, that's cool. But then everybody that I talk to, they like, you still have to get a master's anyway. So right. it's like, it's like yeah, you get to work for a second, but you still don't want to get a master's anyway. Yeah, so. if everyone else has it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's competitive. Okay, so Ms. Edwards, how have your contributions to diet and nutrition benefited the minority communities in which you represent? Okay. Uh, well, I would say at least within like weight loss, um, just in general, you know, obesity impacts uh, Blacks and um, Hispanics, you know, at a higher rate than whites. So I feel like a large portion of the clients that I see um, are uh, minorities um, and we have different locations. So one location does um, have, you know, a little bit more than the others, but just, you know, being able to interact with different people, um, using different services like interpreter services and having those appointments. So you just kind of get to kind of learn the different, just all, all the different, you know, kinds of people and, you know, their backgrounds and what they bring. So it's been really nice to kind of see the wide range of population. Um, but outside of that, um, not much more. I, um, am planning on hopefully getting more involved in, um, you know, the Black Organization Group for Dietetics. Um, but yeah. I know like in um, minority communities, it's probably like a lot, well, it is, it's not probably, but it is like a lot of different um, health disparities that lead to improper nutrition. So I'm sure you see that a lot dealing with the minority community because are you, are they like, um, morbidly obese like that's how your patients are and so um it's a lot of different food insecurities that plays a huge part into that so I think what you're doing for the community is big because a lot of people um they're not even in front of that problem people don't understand it's, it's a lot of systematic racism that's involved in that you can't just have somebody come in and be like oh well you're obese and it's your fault like no actually right. let's look deeper into this problem what neighborhood are you coming from what access what kind of access to food do you have so I, I think like that's just that alone is a dope contribution to, you know, diet and nutrition and a dope contribution to your community because that's where it starts. That's how we start preventing 
chronic diseases and stuff in our patients that you have to educate them first and somebody has to be an advocate somebody has to be the person that informs them of it because I'm pretty sure you see this they don't even know what's going on they just come in and the problem has just gotten to the worst point and it's just like they didn't know how it got this bad and nobody right. around them know how it got this bad but you know because it's like <laughs> hey I studied this it's like I know right. that not your fault <laughs> we're, we'll work on it so I definitely I, I definitely commend you for that so Miss Edward what additional licenses should dietetic students pursue that will make them more marketable after graduation okay um well after graduation um I completed the certificate of training in obesity and weight management um through the weight management DPP group um so I finished that and that was great um and then I plan on actually getting the full certification, which requires 2000 hours and the exam and all of that. Um, so that's what I have down the line, but I would yeah, definitely recommend one of those advanced um, certifications. I'm interested in the weight management one, the, there's a certified diabetes one, and then the sports nutrition. So it's like endless mm -hmm. opportunities there. So I would definitely recommend an advanced uh, certification but if you're interested in like um, physical activity, I'm a fitness instructor, personal trainer. So I love, you know, doing that on the side as well. And even just, you know, with weight loss, you know, we talk about physical activity often. So it kind of plays in as well. Yeah, we have one um, student in our program. Her name is Carrie. She's actually a personal trainer currently and so now she's like she had her license in first and then she came back to school for nutrition so I'm like girl you already ahead of the game like I need to <laughs> I need to catch up with you but I do understand that A&D has a lot of uh, you get um, you can take like certification classes and get certified for a few things um, but I don't think they're as demanding as the weight loss class you said you said you had to get what 1200 hours was it um yeah for the certification you need 2000 hours and do the exam and all of that but uh, yeah that's down the line <laughs> I wish you luck with that oh my gosh that sounds like a lot but you know I'm sure you're more than <laughs> prepared for it it's still thank yes. you work here <laughs> no that's really dope because I just it's so many different um paths to go it's like where do you even start and so a student like me who I I switched to this major like it wasn't okay. nothing that I came to school and was like oh my gosh yes nutritional science like I love it like it was not that at all I got exposed to it um initially at my job I worked um clinically in um, renal failure I was a CCHT I'm working in dialysis okay. and that was the first time I was even introduced to a dietitian and I didn't even know like this is a job I'm like you're making stuff up this is not a real job I <laughs> never heard of this before <laughs> and then at Howard I was exposed again through my introduction to nutrition class because I was a, um, mm. a health science major so that was a part of my scheme that I had to take it and I got interested and I added another nutrition class on and just kept adding more and now I'm here <laughs> <laughs> switching my major so now it's like uh I tell uh, my clinical coordinator this I'm like it's like you're putting me in front like a child in front of three different ice cream flavors I don't know which one to choose <laughs> like it's so many it's so many different paths you could go so it's like me right now it's kind of figuring out what I like and just taking all of these opportunities mm -hmm. and just absorbing them and talking to different people like yourself and seeing like different paths that I could go into because it's like so much and it's just like I want to do everything but I know eventually right. I'm going to have to pick one and stick with it and like specialize in it so I'm, I'm definitely going to look into different licenses and that's going to make me more marketable because when I say you go anywhere and it's like one one path is completely different mm -hmm. from me. it's like how is this even the same degree <laughs> Right, it makes it nice though. You can do so many yeah. things. It's so flexible, and I—that's—that's that's one thing I actually love about it. It's like, yeah, I can pretty much do what I want, like literally what I want and how I want it. So I—I I like that. But it's just now, it's just can't give a kid too many options. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so which ones are you like going towards? Um, I'm really liking like communications, like public policies. I'm really uh, mm -hmm. looking more into that. And then like self-employment work, um, like media. Um, that's what I'm looking into. But I also really like clinical too. I really okay. like clinical. I just don't know what like 
where I will be placed clinically. I'm also like, um, you know, um, preconception, pregnancy, postconceptions. Like I'm like in uh, different stages in life cycles. So it's just, it's so. <laughs> It's just right. like, where maybe we'll narrow it down a bit once you uh hopefully because i've started doing my um community tr- uh, nutrition practicum site which is in a wick office which is like giving okay. me crazy baby fever i'm like <laughs> i see literally babies and they babies they come they babies they like right. infant babies like born within like 72 hours they have to be there have an appointment so it's just oh. like i'm seeing like babies and um a postpartum mothers and then my second practicum site is in full service management so I'm like I could I could work in a hospital or I could run like a restaurant I know how to do menu planning like it's so much I could I'm mm-hmm. like maybe I should just be a consultant and just do everything I, I don't oh, yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. I, that's I, my plan down the line eventually have my own practice yeah. and just do a little bit of everything yeah and that's what I mean that's practically okay because that's, what, that's really what America needs. Right. <laughs> Not even America, the whole world. Like they need people like us because it's just like I said, I didn't even know this is an actual job. And <laughs> so I, I don't um, think I really knew dietitian was a job either. Like I went in as traditional science, I was pre med. But I just switched until I started volunteering in the community and then I had right. classes and then I fell in love. So <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Okay, Ms. Edwards, so my closing question for you would be, if it's one thing you as a professional in the dietetic field could go back in time and tell yourself as a student in the dietetic program that can make your educational quest more positive, what would it be? Well, I guess the biggest thing that pops up is I feel like when I first came out, uh, you know, I was looking for a clinical, you know, inpatient dietitian job just because that's what like a lot of people, you know, said like, oh, you should start off there. That's a good, you know, job to get, you know, that foundational knowledge and that experience. So I did, um, you know, I was never a big fan of clinical, um, but then once I actually got the clinical job, I was like, okay, yeah, this is not for me. Um, <laughs> so I would have told myself to uh, stick with your gut and just go straight to outpatient. Mm-hmm. I was just like, just followed my heart because I knew what I wanted to do and I was right. <laughs> Yeah, I think especially being at a school like Howard, it's so easy to get influenced. And like I said, we're literally in our curriculum, we're getting exposed to different fields of right. dietitian, so the dietetics. So it's like it's very easy to get influenced. And I'm just like, if you have a plan, you have to stick to it because like if it's what you're supposed to do, all the paths is just going, mm-hmm. it's going, it's going to flow for you. And I've realized that too when I was trying to do health science. It wasn't necessarily hard, but it was just boring. It wasn't, <laughs> it right. wasn't anything because it was like, it wasn't nothing um, specific about the program. It's like, oh, you got nutritional science and you have kinesiology. Then we just don't throw a Zumba class in there. It's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't nothing specific. And so I, I, I really, I really didn't, um, I really didn't like it. But when I got exposed to um, nutritional science and I wanted to switch, um, because I was a pre, I was on a pre PT track, and so okay. uh, my advisor was like the director of the PT school, and I told her my plans, and I would lose her as an advisor because I would be switching, um, switching schools, and um, it was just like everybody discouraged me. And he's like, "Well, we've never seen anybody go to nutritional science route to be a PT." Like, and I'm like, "How haven't you? Like, I feel right. like it works hand in hand. Like, how do you?" how do you like facilitate rehabilitation without knowing what fuels the body and what heals the body? Like that's literally the biggest part about it. Uh, And so they highly, highly, highly discouraged me from doing it, Mm -hmm. highly discouraged me from doing it. And I just really had to think about what I wanted and what I wanted to do. And when I finally made the decision, um, it was so funny to me because it went over my head. I was talking to my mom, leave it to mamas to just make (laughs) you feel like a superstar, but it went over my head. But um I, I made the switch and then the very next semester um I went to orientation for the PT school which I went to every um in the fall every semester because I know I just I just like like to be prepared <laughs> so I just right. always go to the orientation like even as a freshman I'm in orientation like yeah four more years <laughs> but I went and the one thing that was different about orientation this time is the requirements for PT school and now they included 
um, nutritional science courses. You have to take about three nutritional science courses mm -hmm. for the prerequisites to the school. And so I told my mom and she's like, hmm, she's like, wasn't they just telling you you didn't need these courses and they don't see how it relates that all of a sudden they changing the curriculum. I said, let me find out they're trying to keep up with me. Like, how are you ready? <laughs> I'm like, let me find out. But yeah, so it's it's definitely like if if you have a passion and you have a mindset about what you want to do, the devil gonna try to discourage you. If it's what you're supposed to do in the path that you're supposed to be on, the devil gonna send everybody, even your advice. Like that was a crazy thing to me. I'm like, right. are you supposed to be supportive. Yeah. Um, and so they and I, I wouldn't say they weren't supportive, but they was just like, nah, sis, we don't get it. We don't understand. Right. Stick with us, we got you. And I'm just like, but that's not going to make me happy. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> so definitely. So thank you so much, Miss Edwards, for conducting this interview with me. I really, really enjoyed this time and speaking with you. Um, like I said, this interview is definitely going to help me, myself, as well as uh, my peers along our journey. When I edit this um, and put it together, um, it's going to be you and about four of the dietitians that's going to be a part of this interview. Okay. So when I edit it and put it together, I definitely will send you a copy of it just so you can see what I'm posting. Oh, For nice. my classmates, yes. Yes, I, I, I want y'all to see it because I, I got some editing skills. I'm kind of... Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm like, I've been thinking like, how am I going to edit this? It's been in like my head. I'm trying to be so creative, but I definitely um, will send you a copy of it just so you can see um, how you play the role in motivating our class because uh, we really need it, child. I'm telling you. Uh, and then of I will course. also like to stay in contact with you and just have you as somebody on my team to support and like mentor me along my journey. Um, I didn't see, I couldn't find you on LinkedIn. I was trying to stop you. But, oh, yeah. Uh, I, um, huh. Oh yeah, I'm on there. I, you I, on there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll try to find. Well, I'll send you a um, I'll send you the link to my page, um, so we can connect via LinkedIn, and then I also have your email address and everything. So we'll definitely stay in contact. And like I said, yeah, I appreciate you accepting my invitation to interview with me, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Of course, you enjoy your day too and good luck with the video editing. Can't wait to see it. Thank you, thank you.